Hey everyone, Mark here again. So what I'm doing today, I don't know if you remember just yesterday, I think it was actually, I did the video on the Ghost Cat and I was comparing it to some of my other spec racer chassis, in particular, this Viper that I run quite a bit whenever the guys come over on Sunday. This is probably one of the cars I drive the most whenever we're racing our inline Viper cars. And I just noticed it wasn't really running as good as it usually does. Um, I think it's, you know, it's running in like the 3.5-ish range, which I know is kind of slow for this car. And I know it's been a while since I've done any maintenance on this car, so I thought I'd do a quick video on just kind of how I break down my Viper and do a kind of quick cleaning on it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart real quick. These brushes, uh, pickup shoes don't look too bad. This, this car has a silver, I used silver pickup shoes on it. And silver pickup shoe springs. Now I take that back. This car has, I think these are BSRT gold springs. Um, let's take the magnets out. I use point zero zero nine springs on my uh, spec racer class cars. All right, so I'm going to use this little chassis spreader tool that you can get from Viper. I think uh, Wizard also makes one, but it makes it real easy to kind of pop out the whole motor. You just place it on either side of the motor magnets, pop it up push it down and it, it kind of pops the whole motor assembly out and it came right out yeah the comms a little bit dirty so we're gonna clean that up should be a should be a spacer in the top there as well Check something real quick. Yeah, There's space in here. I also use this end bell spreader tool. This particular one I got from Wizard because Viper Vipers was on back order for forever or out of stock forever. Yeah, this is pretty dirty in here. So I'm gonna clean the, I'm just gonna clean this all up with some rubbing alcohol to start with. best I can. More concerned with trying to clean the brushes. These brushes have some wear to them, but they're not they're not worn out completely by any means. clean the commutator with some rubbing alcohol as well. See if it cleans it enough. I'm going to go ahead and take my little soft buffing tool here. I'm going to just kind of clean up the palms a little bit. I 
I'm just kind of really gently. I'm sorry, I'm looking under my magnifying light to do this. You know. sure there aren't any like hairs and stuff all wrapped around anything doesn't look too bad I don't see any actually there is some lint and stuff stuck in here I'm gonna pause the camera for a second and just kind of pull out all the little lint and stuff that's on the armature all right, so I've got the armature looking pretty clean. Commutator, I pulled out any kind of lint and stuff that I saw wrapped around anywhere. All right. compressed air. I usually like to blow all this stuff out too if I can. Get some more. I'm just kind of pulling out any little kind of dust and debris. Just cleaning out this end bell as, as best I can. Sorry guys, I'm doing this under the, the magnifying light so I can see what I'm doing, but I'm basically just trying to clean this end bell. Now let's, let's see if this end bell needs any tweaking. I usually like to have each brush be a little bit past the center when you pull the one brush and this can be tweaked a little bit. I know it's hard to see, but... That looks pretty good. Basically, when you push one brush down, you want to see where the other brush ends up in relation to the, the center of the, the bushing. So you have it tweaked really well. This looks pretty good. Clean this. Basically, just kind of cleaning everything up. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going crazy here, but it's definitely going to be better than it was. I, I really wanted to clean the commutator and the brushes. That was my biggest concern. I'll give, the, uh, give the chassis a, a quick cleaning as well. Get all this old oil and stuff out of here, and then we'll, we'll re-oil everything. Yeah, that's pretty dirty. <laughs> anyway, every everybody has their own kind of method on how they like to clean things, but basics are the basics, really. Uh, 
hangers look pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> All right, got the chassis cleaned out. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the motor actually hold on I'm gonna pause for one more second all right I just wanted to clean all my the magnets were pretty dirty so um I guess I'll do this real quick on camera but so you want to take your I, I use a little 0 0.10 uh, spacer on the top of there's already a little plastic spacer up there so I use a little small spacer on the top. And we're gonna take our bracket, our timing bracket, make sure that make sure that little tab is pointing away from the armature or pointing towards the end bell. And take our little spreading tool here. Get our Brushes spread out good and basically just put that in there. Got your your armature in. I use this little shimmy spacer thing that Viper sends. Some guys don't like to use it. Gonna take our motor magnets. Oh, this is great. The white dot has kind of come off on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, crud. All right, I'm gonna have to pause for a second because I got to figure out how these magnets go in. All right, what I ended up doing from another car that had the white dot, I took the traction magnet that sticks to the side of that so I can find the, so you see this one, it repels. This one it sticks to. So this is the one that should have the white knot. Take my Sharpie here and I'm just gonna put a little dot on it so I know the future reference. All right, so we should be good to Finish building this motor. Hopefully, hopefully my uh, theory there is correct. <laughs> All right, so otherwise the car is gonna go backwards. Let's go ahead and get this motor put back together. Nah. Trying to do this standing up is never easy for me. <laughs> All right, so I've got the motor situated, and again, we gotta be careful and make sure we clear those hangers. Oh, I just made the little spacer pop off, so that kind of stinks. got that back in there. I use this tiny little screwdriver to kind of shimmy the hangers and make sure they get past the uh, tabs on the... One of them always seems to be easier than the other. All right, so got those... I don't know if you can see that, those tabs past the hanger.
push that down. All right, motor is in. Put it in advanced timing, driver side down. Got this spaced. Pretty good. I might, I could probably maybe squeeze a 5,000 spacer in there, but I don't want to make it too tight. All right, I'm going to pause this again for a second and put the rest of the car back together. All right, put the pickup shoes back in. We're going to give the rear bearing a little, a little bit of oil. Front, a little bit of oil. And then we'll go ahead and I'm going to put the magnets in again, high down force. Make sure the surface of the magnet that would touch the rail attaches to the side of the car. These are... These are the max traction magnets, which only go in the car one way, because you got that flared out edge in the clip. There's just enough space for the clip to clip on. Like that. Get our clip back on. Okay. Pop in my rear axle. And let's see how she looks on the dyno. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Back up in the, about to hit four here, yep. That's how this baby usually runs, up in the slow fours. All right, so I'm happy with that. And, you know, that's what I do when my cars, when I feel like they're just kind of not running as good as they usually do, or if I happen to put it on the dyno and notice it, then I just kind of tear it down. And really cleaning the brushes and the, the comm usually, is, usually does it, so. Anyway, that's it. That's the maintenance for this car. She should tear it up around the track again now. All right, guys. Talk with you soon. Thanks.